our Father who art in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear sisters, today we will uh, have a reflection on rule of life number 9 to 12. So this is consecration for the mission. You know what is uh, consecration? Consecration makes us, I mean, worthy to take up the mission of Christ. And we know biblically speaking, you also said, consecration is set apart. Okay. So we are consecrated means we are set apart for a purpose, for a noble purpose. St. Paul in his letter to Romans chapter 1 verse 1 he says, he is consecrated for the gospel of Christ. So consecration naturally gives also a mission for us. And that's what also we see in our rule of life, consecration for the mission. So we will uh, now see in the beginning, I think in number 9, we are going to see what is that consecration and what is that mission. Understanding of consecration and understanding of mission. So this is a beautiful uh, quote from our mother Claudine. And she says, long live Jesus, I give myself to Jesus, I consecrate myself to Jesus, I abandon myself to Jesus, I wish to live and die for the love of Jesus. You see, all that she does or all that uh, she takes up is for Jesus. That is consecration. So I am consecrated for Christ. I am consecrated for Jesus. This is the spirit of Mother Claudine. So when she talks about her consecration, she gives three important terms. First of all, it is to give, not to take, not to receive. It is always the spirit of giving. That is consecration. And second one, the very word consecration also is here. I consecrate myself to Jesus. That means hereafter there is nothing for me. Everything that I do or everything that I wish is for Jesus. So consecration, the second word we also see here is for Jesus. The third one is abandon. You know abandoning is totally surrendering. That is abandoning. We know when we want to abandon our spirit, when we want to abandon ourselves, that means there is no selfishness, there is no egoism, there is uh, no personal agenda thereafter. So that is what uh, we understand as abandoning of oneself. So these three words, giving oneself, consecrating oneself, abandoning oneself, and she develops that finally as to live and die for Jesus. Paul would say, if I live, that is also for Christ. If I die, that is also for the glory of Christ. And that is what we see here, live and die for Jesus. And so, finally, from this beautiful quote, what reflection or what, uh, I mean, uh, a way of life we can get is, consecration for mission begins from the denial of self. So if there is no denial of self, if there is still thinking about ourselves, or if we are focused on ourselves, there is no consecration. So consecration can happen, or consecration can take place only when there is a denial of self. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself, you see. So that the denial is saying no to ourselves and saying yes to Jesus. This is what we see here as consecration. So we can understand the very term consecration means 
saying yes to the Lord who has called us and saying no to the world which distracts us. And we are called by our religious life, by our consecrated life to follow Jesus and to say to the plan of God, plan of the Father. And you know, religious people in the church are also called as consecrated people. See? So you are not uh, real members or mere members of one institute. You are all consecrated people in the church. That means you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to you. That is consecration. So consecration makes it clear, I do not belong to anyone in the world, I belong to Christ. And Christ belongs to me. That belongingness we should have and we should experience and that is the invitation when we talk about uh, the consecration. So our consecration is for the mission. So please understand, our consecration never goes in vain. Our consecration is not without a purpose, it's with a purpose and that purpose implies by the word mission. We will see now. Our religious consecration, rule of life number 9 says, our religious consecration is rooted in that of baptism and baptism is a fuller expression of it. So that means this consecration is not just for the priests. Consecration is not just for the religious. Consecration is for every baptized person. Because baptism we receive in the name of the Trinity, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Father and in the name of the Spirit. And baptism is the fuller expression and complete expression of consecration. So every baptized person in a broader understanding is a consecrated person. Every baptized person in a broader understanding is a consecrated person. To make it very sharp, to make it very precise, you and me are consecrated people and we are consecrated persons because we have already said no to the world and a perfect yes to the Father, perfect yes to Jesus, perfect yes to the Spirit. And this is what we also see in the first amen, in the first yes of our blessed mother. She said a complete yes and a perfect yes and that is what uh, today we understand sacramentally in the sacrament of baptism. Baptism commits us totally with Christ in his mission. That means if we are baptized, everybody has a mission. Whether he or she is a lay person, whether he is a priest or she is a religious sister, baptism gives us the mission. That means every Christian has to continue the mission of Christ. Now you will understand so that uh, this consecration is not uh, meant only for us. It's also in a broader concept. It implies every baptized Christian and mission also is not just for us. Mission also is for everybody, for all those who are baptized. So baptism is what? Baptism is experiencing the death of Christ also experiencing the resurrection of Christ. So what is the death of Christ? As I said earlier, death of Christ here saying no to the world and what is resurrection? Saying yes to the Father, saying yes to Jesus, saying yes to the Spirit and that is the yes of baptism and that is the no of baptism. So no of baptism is to experience the death of Christ and the yes of baptism is to experience the real life or the dedication of ourselves to Christ. 9.1 we read, in this covenant of love, what is that covenant, covenant of love? I understand baptism is the covenant of love. Because you are united with Christ, you are united with the Father, united with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. So the covenant is... Another term or a biblical term for relationship. In the covenant of love, we are given the grace to respond to the call of the Father. So what is that call of the Father? Call of the Father is always for the mission. So the call of the Father demands that we 
need to respond to that call and then we see and to live profoundly our union with Christ so baptism demands two things one is we need to give a response to the call of the father and we need to live the union with Christ union with Christ and that is what 9.1 then when we go to 9.2 we read consecrated by God we participate in the mission of Christ you see that's what I was explaining until now consecrated by Christ or consecrated in Christ or consecrated for Christ what happens we participate in the mission of Christ what is the mission of Christ that is what we are going to see the kingdom so the mission of Christ is to announce to preach and to act in view of the kingdom so that is the mission of Christ and that mission Jesus did for the poor Jesus did for the marginalized so our mission when it is for the poor when it is for the marginalized when it, when it is for the weaker section of the society we can be sure we continue the mission of Christ and then our public profession of the vows of obedience poverty and chastity is the triple expression of our singleness to the father in Christ so there may be three vows but uh, this uh, three vows all make one yes to the father whether in obedience whether in poverty whether in chastity we again and again say the same yes to the father so what are these vows what are these evangelical counsels of obedience poverty chastity we can say this is our continuous yes to the father this is our repeated yes to the father and this is what is happening also in our profession so through Christ like him and with him we love the father and our sisters and brothers so my dear sisters this consecration if it is for the mission we need to love the brothers and sisters those who are around us that is important without loving St. John would say in his epistle without loving the brothers and sisters you cannot love God so loving of God can happen <coughs> or can be actualized only in the love of the neighbor only in the love that I have for the sisters of my own community or those who are with me and particularly not uh, for the sisters who are okay who are fine those sisters who is who are looking for our company who are looking for some support and for them you need to express your love and for them you need to express your support that is what uh, we call as saying yes to the father or taking these vows as obedience as poverty and as chastity then we go to number 10 I'm sorry there is also number 3 in uh, article I mean rule of life 9 9.3 by offering our urge for liberty our desire to possess and our capacity to love we surrender ourselves without reserve that's what I have also put in caption we surrender ourselves without reserve my dear sisters at the beginning we all surrender ourselves then we also as we I mean grow or uh, as we also I mean experience or do our mission times come and we also face lot of risks and challenges and then we also put condition if this can be like this I can do this if this cannot be like that I cannot do that but that is not our surrendering rule of life number 9.3 says by offering our urge for liberty I want to be free I want to decide for myself and nobody can decide what I should do we surrender our urge for liberty that means once we are consecrated hereafter it is not my will as Jesus said it is not my will thy will be done that is the surrendering of urge of liberty here I don't uh, I mean place myself as important I place Christ 
or I place the father as the one who decides for me. And that is the urge for liberty. And then our desire to possess. We want to also possess this and that. And this surrender also demands that uh, we say also no to our desires. Whether bodily desires or whether the desires of the material things or desire for the worldly fame and name all this we surrender so that God may be glorified our mission may be, may be magnified and this is the condition that we read we need to do this surrender without reserve without reserve means what? in this I want to have my wish only in that I want to have my opinion also to be taken no without reserve means hereafter whatever your will I will do whatever God's will let me do that is what we read or we understand when we read without reserve so that caught up in Christ and placed at the service of the world Jesus said I came to serve not to be served and service for others service for the needy so, when we want to serve others or when we want to serve the needy, when we want to serve the poor, this dedication is very important. I have to say no to my liberty and I also have to say no to my possessing, I mean capacity or possessing desires. So, I have to say no to all this, then only I can really say that uh, I am surrendered to Christ or I am dedicated to Christ. At the service of the world, these living forces are transformed in his Paschal mystery. So, what we understand here, consecrated for the mission means surrendering ourselves without reserve and thus we are disposed at the service of the entire society. Not for a particular group, not for a particular people, not for my own people, I am for all. I am for everybody. That means I am at the service of the entire community and that community again and again we say that should be a needy community and that should be a community where they are looking for God's support and God's love. 9.4 Thus our lives bear witness already now to the time when God will be for all. So God is for all. If God is for all, my mission also is to be for all. If understand, if we utter like this, that God is universal, my mission also has to be universal. By which I would like to ask you, my dear sisters, when you do the mission, please do it for the benefit of everyone, for the good of everybody. Don't do it only for your own people. Don't have any personal interest when you do the mission of Christ. Let this not be for my own people, for my own group, for my own, uh, I mean, uh, uh, linguistic group, or for my own caste people. All these are not signs of surrendering, are not uh, also the expressions of our commitment. What is very important is, if we are consecrated means, we surrender ourselves without any reserve. And thus, our lives bear witness already now to the time when God will be for all the only Lord and Master, the only treasure and the only love. Now we will go to number 10. Number 10 begins the three vows. The first vow is about obedience. Obedience. What the rule of life talks about obedience. You, you will know that definitely. But now since we are also taking these points for our personal reflection, for recollection, we would like to biblically understand what is obedience and also in our context, in the context of rule of life, how to connect obedience with the kingdom. How to connect obedience with the consecration. How to connect obedience with the mission. Now we will see. Rule of life number 10 begins like this. Christ sought unceasingly the will of the Father. First of all, ceasing, ceasingly looking to fulfill the will of the Father is the beginning of our obedience. You see, his fidelity led him to love us unto death. 
loving us unto death even to the death on the cross this is what we receive from the inspirational text philippians 2 christ loved us and he loved us unto the cross and what we read there he obeyed to the will of the father and as the expression of his obedience he accepted the death and that too on the cross so by obeying he has set us free see sometimes we think by obedience we lose our liberty by obedience sometimes we think and uh, i don't know say when i obey i am just uh, obedience christ brought uh, freedom you see by obedience what is the effect uh, liberation and that freedom and liberation was possible when jesus was dying on the cross by his obedience what the world received was freedom and liberation and this is what we see here obedience leading us to freedom obedience can never lead us to enslavement obedience can never take us to slavery rather biblically speaking or when we understand our own vows we understand in the light of the gospel or in the light of christ that obedience leads us to freedom 10.1 says with jesus our only desire is to do what pleases god again and again today what we listen is pleasing god that means obedience is not to please anyone our obedience is to please christ sometimes i mean you obey because you want to please the superiors you want to please your own i mean uh, big shots and that is not the understanding when we talk about obedience obedience means our desire to please god we seek and accept the will of the father in our daily life so obedience has to be every day matter every day think it is not uh, on a fine day we just have the candle in our hands and once again renew our vows that is not obedience our obedience is not happening once a month or once a year when you receive the transfer list no that is not obedience obedience is every day think whenever i get up i get up to obey to the will of god to obey to the will of the father and this is what we see through events relations with our fellow human beings our life in community and in the congregation the calls of the church and the signs of the times all this demand our obedience to the call of the father so obedience is the thing that happens every day and demands that we also exercise obedience in everything so obedience i will say is something connected to religious life it is something i mean uh, uh, molded or shaped with a religious person or a consecrated person 10.2 gives an explanation for obedience obedience freely accepted and lived in faith ah sorry okay sorry obedience freely accepted and lived in faith freely accepted so it is not by any force obedience is not by any force obedience is what happens by free will free will with free strength and with your own capacity you say yes and then it's a matter matter of obedience and humility and truth is the expression of our surrender humility and truth is the expression of our surrender to the father with christ and of our availability to the mission when you go to the church in the morning you say yes to the father are you saying yes to the father i believe that yeah you do that and when you come out what do you have to do you have to continue that yes it is not that the yes only in the chapel only in the eucharist only in our personal prayers not just alone in the spiritual reading on the scripture reading we see here if you give your obedience to the father to jesus 
you need to be available for the mission availability so obedience goes along with the availability for the mission suppose i come out of the church i enter my room i shut the door and spending the time with the things that what are, what pleases me or what i want to do that is not obedience at all so obedience demands that we need to be available for the mission thus obedience is not abdication here i have given the meaning what is abdication abdication is renouncing of responsibility i just cannot uh, i mean leave the responsibility or forget about my responsibility and say that uh, i obey god or I obey obey in my religious life i am perfect in my obedience we can't say that and so what happens but a consecration of our liberty again and again you see consecration of our liberty i am a liberated person i am a free person i can do whatever i want but for consecration i say no to this and i say yes to the bigger thing and this is what we see here consecration of our liberty to help every person to be truly free and that's why my dear sisters even at the beginning i said obedience leads us to freedom when you obey that helps for somebody or some people to be freed in their life so obedience not just for your own freedom obedience not just for your own liberation when you obey to the will of the father when you are available for the mission that also helps for the freedom of others 10.3 in the service of the mission our obedience guarantees the unity of the entire congregation as an apostolic body definitely the whole congregation is called as an apostolic body this apostolic body or the entire congregation can be an apostolic body when everybody i mean uh, implements the vow of obedience suppose one or two if you don't obey or if you don't practice the vow of obedience we cannot call that congregation as an apostolic body we are apostolic body in the sense we are in another term the body of christ body of christ uh, i mean cannot, cannot be distorted body of christ uh, has to be as a unified body so likewise also an institute or a religious institute or a religious congregation if it is to be called as an apostolic body the vow of obedience has to be practiced by every member of the institute or by every member of the congregation very good and then we go to number 11 number 11 we see our desires at the service of the mission number 11 begins like this by the vow of obedience we bind ourselves to obey the decisions of our lawful superiors see until now we were talking about how we need to obey to jesus how we need to obey to the father now we are coming to practical things if you really say that you obey the father if you obey jesus if you really obey the trinity you need to obey your lawful superiors what is that obeying your lawful superiors we continue and then we try to understand we obey the decisions of our lawful superiors in all things referring directly or indirectly to the life of the congregation whatever they decide whatever they announce if it is if it is the expression of the life of the congregation particularly according to the rule of life you have to say yes and there only you can say that you really practice the vow of obedience you can't say i obey only god i don't obey any human person you can't say that only with your full knowledge only with your commitment you have also taken the vow of obedience vow of obedience i have also attended some of the i mean uh, the first vows or the final vows you profess only in the presence of your major superior major superior in her presence you say 
that you will obey her not only her also those who succeed and also those who are in that responsible position so my dear sisters these days this is very very difficult very very difficult in you see priests finding it very difficult to obey the bishops and you my dear sisters finding it very difficult to obey first of all your own superior in the community and then also to respect and obey the major superiors those who are in that uh, respectable positions and vice versa i would say these days it's very very difficult to, to be in a leadership position to be in a leadership position why because of the i mean risks and challenges that they face by their own members by their own members it is not because there is a problem by the government it is not because there is a problem by outer society it is because what is happening within the society within the congregation within the community so today i tell you if whatever i mean the lawful superiors tell you according to the rule of life according to the life of congregation even if it is difficult even if it is hard for you you are invited to say a broader this yes and a humble yes to their words 11.1 by accepting an obedience in faith we make the apostolic mission of the congregation our own just now i said no when one when only all of us all the members can practice obedience then we can call our institute as an apostolic body i told you so this is what is happening by your obedience single obedience every person as an individual when you practice obedience then your apostolic mission and the apostolic mission of the congregation also becomes your own conscious of our responsibility we place all our capacities all our strength all our personal projects and our desires at the service of the mission so what is important mission of the individual who is important mission is important individual is not important once you profess the vow of obedience don't say that i am not respected that is my individual freedom all that uh, is there but uh, we make a sacrifice of our own desires of our own will for the greater glory for the greater thing which we call as the mission of the congregation and this is what we see the desires at the service of our mission all my desire i leave that i say no to all my personal desires so that the service of the mission is important service of the apostolic institute is rather important 11.2 we read obedience presupposes a time of discernment i think all of you except uh, this uh, i mean uh, young sisters those who are in formation all of you have professed isn't it you are all professed sisters and you also have professed for obedience huh? including me i have also given that to obedience for my bishop and his successors so obedience we learn that uh, from the life of christ it is not from the life of anyone it is from the life of christ because we are here to imitate christ we are here to follow christ we are here to walk at the footsteps of christ that means christ obeyed and therefore i need to obey christ obeyed and therefore i need to obey so my dear sisters all this obedience you make or you take the vow of obedience only after your discernment a decision of the superior and the acceptance of this decision by the sister concern so decisions are made by few and uh, implementation or practice is done by all of us suppose that member who was a superior once uh, i mean her term is over she becomes an ordinary member she can't say last year i was superior last year i was major superior so i know what to do and i know what to say no once you are under the capacity of a member or once you practice 
only to be a member then you also need to obey others only in that way i always appreciate i mean the religious life in the religious life only see you are a provincial after your term you are just a member in our term you see bishop is always bishop yeah even after retirement he is bishop maybe we have to also suggest to the universal church maybe to the holy father after retirement you have heard about uh, uh, the bishop emeritus of salem he is serving in a parish yeah after his retirement that is i mean uh, voluntarily he resigned okay let us not discuss about it and then after his retirement he directly went to a parish and now he is serving in a parish so that is an edification that is an edification i want that to be applied also to your life when it is i mean uh, i mean your leadership you expect others to obey when you are a member you also please obey the lawful superiors and so obedience is the decision of the superior and the acceptance of the sister concerned and finally now we go to rule of life number 12 number 12 each obedience is a sending forth so what is that each obedience is a mission that is what sending forth christ sent his disciples christ sent them on a mission they obeyed and so now beautifully rule of life number 12 says each obedience is a sending forth even if you don't go out even if you don't uh, attend to the need of a person when you willfully say yes according to the life of the congregation according to the rule, rule of life when you say yes to the lawful superiors i think there your mission begins there your mission begins even if you have not done anything by the very saying yes to the words of your superiors this is what we read in number 12 obedience and each obedience every obedience is a sending forth we will read that rule of life number 12 our congregation is an apostolic body for the mission there is no doubt we are well explained gathered in communities under the authority of a superior we seek together the will of god that's why my dear sisters i always encourage you communare means to do together and only from that the latin term community is coming so community all of you need to do together whatever it is whatever it is starting from morning until you go to bed community life means everybody should involve suppose one or two they go and have their own way and if they are not joining themselves with the community that is not a community that is not a religious life at all and this is what we see here every community under the authority of a superior we seek together the will of god together that togetherness is the beauty of the community being together this is what we also learn as the life of the early church they were together in body and soul they were together and so this togetherness everybody should i mean put your heart and soul to keep this togetherness to keep this unity in every community it is not the work of the superior alone it is the duty or it is the work of everybody everybody should work for togetherness everybody should do our duty for this beautiful concept of unity in the community 12.1 each obedience is sending forth and all authority entrusted is a mission in view of the kingdom in view of the kingdom you see each obedience is a sending forth whether you do any any action or don't do any action when you say yes when you obey that itself is a sending forth what is sending forth we always understand to go out that is only sending forth so going out is not necessary going out is not necessary even when you are shut in the room if you can say yes then it is a sending forth yes obedience demands as generous a participation in research as in action a generous participation generosity is required if you are a obedient person if you need to be an obedient sister 
generosity of heart is very very important generosity of mind is rather important generosity of yourself very self is very important 12.2 at all levels what are those levels general provincial local local in the sense in your own community authority is received as a mission so this is i think for the superiors authority need to be seen as a mission authority is not something with which you can punish the people authority is given to you so that you can be a better servant and servant number 1 and that's why you are called as a superior you need to be the first person to obey you need to be a model in terms of obedience so authority is received as a mission accepted in faith and exercised in a spirit of humble service so my dear sisters even this group of farmers or even those who are juniors here or young sisters i'm sorry no juniors young sisters young sisters when you take up the responsibility that is a beautiful chance for being servants being servants this is what number 12.2 says in a spirit of humble service so not only you all those who are listening to this should know that when we are given the responsibility of being a leader being a principal being a mistress or being a superior animator in a community you need to do that with the spirit of service with the spirit of service not with the spirit of partiality not with the spirit of favoritism so this needs to be done with the spirit of generosity and with the spirit of service 12.3 we cannot accept or solicit responsibilities employments or offices outside the congregation without the permission of the lawful superior superiors my dear sister this doesn't mean when parish priest asks you don't say that uh, our congregation says we should not take up any responsibility no 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 this is uh, a responsibility or office which can give you a salary a remuneration that is what we understand here so we need to properly understand sometimes we also misunderstand and also misinterpret this so this needs to be properly understood what is that we cannot accept or solicit responsibilities me myself going voluntarily and saying i can do this what will you do for me or what will you give for me that kind of receiving that kind of expectation cannot be in the life of religious cannot be in the life of a person who is a member of this institute this is what rule of life 12.3 says without the permission of the law, lawful superiors you can't do that and i don't want to explain this in a broader scale so whatever you do even when the salary comes that belongs to the congregation that not doesn't belong to you please understand because i work i only work and the money is only for me yeah lawfully speaking that is true but uh, when you are a member or when you have already surrendered yourself dedicated yourself then the spirit has to be a congregational spirit a province spirit a community spirit never a selfish spirit 12.4 we obey the sovereign pontiff as our first superior canon 5.9 to whom we are subject even in virtue of our vow of obedience of course all our obedience is to god and in practical things we say that in the universal church my first obedience more than my own major superiors it is a obedience to the holy father because he is the leader of the entire church and we are all subject to him we are all subject to him and 12.4 it says uh, second part at the local level okay universally speaking i am a subject of the holy father when it comes to the diocese we have another canon at the local level we follow the directives of the bishop of the diocese in conformity with canon law canon 678 i have taken only canon 678 article 1 what is that article 1 article 1 says religious are subject to the power of bishops 
in what that is important you are not merely subjects to the power of the bishop in what that needs to be explained religious are subject to the power of bishops whom they are bound to follow with the devoted submission and reverence in those matters now we come to the point in those matters which regard the care of souls the public exercise of divine worship and other works of the apostolate so my dear sir though you have got your provincialate here though you got uh, your novitiate here and uh, the home for the i mean senior sisters whatever communities are there all communities also in a way take part in the apostolate of the diocese apostolate in the diocese so what this novices can do they can pray for the bishop for example they can also pray for the priests they can also pray for all the faithful of the church they need not to go and serve in one of the pastoral commissions in the diocese need not do that but they can do that by their prayer and likewise also the senior sisters they have worked enough for the diocese they have also done all that was possible for them for the growth of the local church now what they can do they can do that in the form of prayer so this apostolate of the diocese is very important and everybody contributes and that's why here we say we are also in a way subject to the local bishop we also express our vow of obedience also to the local bishop in terms of our apostolate please understand in terms of our apostolate in this particular diocese we are also connected to the bishop and above all we are connected to the holy father above all we are all connected to the god god the father who has chosen us and who is continue to send us for the mission